All right, hi there guys. Happy Saturday morning or afternoon, wherever you are. I'm gonna type in the comments here. Hi, who is with me? So, many of you know that I'm leaving these events as recorded and uh, the replay will, will stay up. As actually, uh, I think just about all the events that we've done on Saturdays are available in the events tab. So you can go back and watch other ad hoc events that we've done on various topics. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, for today, we are in the midst of a five month program that I've put together. So there's a chronology, there's a chrono chronological order to these trainings that'll help give you sort of a roadmap on how to get from point A to point B. Point A being your bank account balance today and point B hopefully a bank account balance that's quite a lot higher. Uh, or at the very least, a portfolio of properties that you can generate cash from for the rest of your life or for as long as you want to, okay? So that's what we're gonna cover. Now, if you're on here with me live, go ahead and let me know in the comments. The advantage of being on here live is I will go ahead and look through these comments. Hey, Matt, uh, good to see you. I see that you're on with me. Uh, if you have questions about any of this, go ahead, drop them in the comments. I'll look back and, I mean, I'll, I'll look at the end of this live and then uh, go through some of the questions if there are any. Otherwise, if you're watching this on recording or replay, you can also ask questions and I do come in and I'll answer the questions later. So, so with that being said, uh, there's, there's 21 of these sessions that we're going to do that run the gamut, run the full spectrum so that you can get a comprehensive look at what this business entails and what it could look like for you financially and I will have the replays up. So if you weren't at last week's call, go into the events tab and look at week one and you'll get up to speed very, very quickly. Now, what I'd suggest is if you, if you don't already have access to my five module mini course, that will be a nice cliff notes version of the things that we're gonna cover over the next five months. It'll give you a good primer so that you'll know what kinds of questions to ask as you come into the uh, lives or the replays and then offer uh, questions, comments, whatever you wanna put in the comment section so that we can get your, your questions answered. And so go access that mini course. If you don't have it, just let me know. I'll, uh, I'll shoot you a link to it. Uh, also, you know, a lot of folks are being exposed uh, to real estate for the very first time and there's a tendency for folks to really just look at the idea of, of wholesaling properties, which is a strategy, but I've done a whole seminar on things that you need to know with respect to wholesaling, why uh, you're probably going to be in a better situation if you learn a more comprehensive set of strategies and tactics that allow you to get the most out of the calls that you're making on sellers. You know, we go a lot deeper than just offering somebody 50, 60 cents on the dollar. Okay, that gets old very, very quickly and it can become very discouraging if you don't have other tools uh, in the toolbox. So I can send you a, a link to that training as well. Just let me know. And then I also have a whole book of scripts that I can, I'll give you as well. Just if you don't have that, uh, go ahead, comment. You know, I need the scripts in the comment section and I'll hit you with that as well. All right. So effectively, what we're going to be doing over the next five months across 21 sessions is we're going to cover, first of all, strategy. What is a strategy that allows you to buy any house from any seller in any market and not have to use any of your own money or any of your own credit, okay? That's the overarching aspect to the whole training is learning that strategy. Once you have an understanding of the strategy and the deal structures that comprise that strategy, the next thing that you have to learn is what is your approach with the seller? Like I just mentioned earlier, if you're talking about wholesaling property, simply getting properties at a cheap price and assigning the contract to somebody, <laughs> there's not really that much to it, right? It's this is how much I'm willing to pay for your house. Will you take it? 
and then they go look and see on Zillow that it's worth twice that much, and then they think you're, you know, a clown. <laughs> That's why, you know, I, I, I'm kind of being a little bit facetious there, but because it is, it is a uh, profitable strategy if, if you know how to do it, and then, and, and if you can do it in high enough volume that you can find these needles in the, in the haystack deals. Um, but you need, I think your approach with the seller is improved considerably when you are more consultative in your approach and you simply ask them questions. Through the questioning process, you'll actually learn from them whether or not there's an opportunity to get the property to discount without having to insult anybody with some of the ridiculous offers that are, that are made on, on houses. Okay, you'll learn that where they're effectively offering to sell you the house as long as you can cash them out, um, usually quickly, that you know they'll be willing to take that discount and then you can go ahead and hook that up. But you're better off learning an approach that allows you to be consultative. Learning an approach where the seller is actually making the offer to you based on you asking them certain questions and what they're willing to do and what they're not willing to do. So we're gonna focus very heavily on what the approach is with the seller after you've learned the strategy, after you've learned the deal structures, you have to know how to approach the seller so that you can demonstrate effectively two things. You can demonstrate one, that you're authentic, you're genuine, you have integrity, you say what you're gonna do and then do what you're gonna say. That usually happens through the rapport building and the conversation, you can leave that impression with folks. And then the second thing, is that you have a certain level of competency. You have a certain level of expertise. And that's gonna come through based on the give and take that occurs during the conversation. So we approach the seller with a certain script of questions so that we know which you know, where to plug them in in terms of what kind of deal structure we're gonna use. And they will be, if they are selling their house, they will be doing one of the things that we service. They will be implementing on one of the deal structures that we're able to service and, and monetize for ourselves and for them. So 100% of the total addressable market of house sellers is available to us because of the strategy that we deploy. So you're going to approach the seller with those questions, that approach, and we're gonna put them into the right bucket, if you will. Now what happens is, a lot of times we're exposing the sellers to alternatives that they're really not all that familiar with. But then when you talk them through it, they realize that it is the best alternative for their situation. That means there's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a need to have a dialogue with that seller, again, so you can demonstrate that you're real, you have character, and demonstrate that you have competency. Character and competency is what marries the deal. You're gonna to have to be able to demonstrate that. And the way you demonstrate that is, well, I'm not gonna teach you character, right? Hopefully you have the character of being honest, being truthful, being real, doing what you're, you, you say you're gonna do, okay? That's something, if you don't have that, then you shouldn't be in this business because you know it doesn't, doesn't lead to, to good things in any business, really. Expertise or competency really just comes from learning, 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 asking, 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 learning, 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 asking, 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 and then calibrating as you go so that you become more of an expert on things. That's really why it's very beneficial to get into trainings like this, more beneficial to get coaching where you can ask questions along the way and have somebody really nurse you through deals and accelerate your, your progress. But it's a matter of, of what you're willing to do for yourself. Okay, so you'll have a dialogue with these, these sellers and you've got to get good at that. So once you've got through that, portion of the training, you're about 90% of the way towards being an effective real estate investor. You understand the strategy, you understand the deal structures that comprise that strategy, you've got a good approach that's consultative in its approach with the seller, and then you know how to answer questions in a way that compels the seller to actually sell you their house so that they can get what they want and you can get what you want, which is monetizing that deal uh, in, in, with some kind of profit for yourself. Okay, that's 90% of it. So what happens once you get through that 90%? Well, you've gotta be able to memorialize those deals that have been orally constructed, the seller phone call, right? And put some paperwork together to those deals. So we're gonna talk about that. 
When do I use a residential purchase and sale agreement? When do I use a lease purchase agreement? When do I use a separate lease and a separate option agreement? When do I use a memorandum of agreement affecting real estate? What kind of paperwork do I use to consummate the various deals that we're gonna do? That's, that's the fourth piece that we have to cover. Strategies piece one, deal structures is piece two. Piece three is your approach and the dialogue with the seller. Piece four is putting the agreements together. And then the fifth piece to all this is being able to actually grow the business, to scale the business with lead generation methods and marketing methods and how do we actually get a stream of motivated sellers coming to us and how do we build a list of buyers that we can go to so that we can get our properties sold quickly when we have them uh, under contract or when we actually already own or control them. So with those five tiers, if you will, you have a robust program that'll allow you to build a tremendous amount of wealth and make a tremendous amount of cash along the way and cash flow monthly, passive cash flow that you don't really have to, you know, um, there's not really much to it, right? Because w in contrast to being a normal landlord, when we do our deals, we're passing on maintenance, repairs, and responsibility onto our buyer because those buyers are in the homeowner mindset. We're trying to get them qualified for a loan. We're trying to embed that mindset with them early on, and we don't really hear from them along the way, along the way meaning the, the term of their lease. So you put yourself in a very good position when you have all of those pieces together. Now, what I'll, what I'll go back to here is that 90% of this business is the seller phone call, okay? It's not the fancy software. I've got fancy software, but that's not what's gonna make you brilliant at this business. What's gonna make you good at this business is understanding the deal structures and understanding what to say to sellers. And you're gonna get good at that by being on the phone with sellers and calibrating as needed. That's again why I really try to push people to the idea of getting coaching. It doesn't have to be me but have somebody who understands what they're doing, someone who's done a lot of these deals. Not one of these programs, which is like 90% of them, where you have a guy like me that's you know doing Facebook Lives and maybe uh, promoting things on Facebook, but then you, you book a call to talk to their team and you get some salesperson, okay? Or you actually sign up for the program for $10,000 or more and they push you off on some acquisitionist. Somebody who's actually working by the hour for the guy like me, who do you want to learn from? Do you want to learn from the guy who's actually doing the deals or do you want to learn from somebody who is actually an employee of that real estate investor? Okay. You know, they might not be in a better financial position than you. They're just communicating a strategy that they've heard or, or potentially learned from the real estate investor, but they haven't gone out and done it themselves. That's not really who I'd want to learn from. Okay. So, you know, one of the distinct features uh, in the Terms Daddy program, in, in this program, is that I get on the, on the phone with you and we determine if it's going to be a good fit from the very beginning. I don't put a salesperson on there. Uh, you know, I'm not even trying to build a gigantic coaching organization here. Really, the reason I do this is for deal flow is because I know I can get you self-reliant at this. And I'll put my, my time, energy, resources, heart, and soul into getting you self-reliant. And then down the line, that leads to deal flow for me because oftentimes people want to joint venture on deals that are bigger, you know, where there's, you know, where there's bigger money involved, like seven figure deals, those kinds of things where, you know, they're a little bit nervous about it. And the view is that, hey, 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. And if I JV with Joel on this, then, you know, I'm probably going to make money. Now, I, I do tend to discourage that because I can show you what to do and you'll make a lot more money that way. But, you know, the coaching allows for me to uh, get you self-reliant and have a whole lot of people that are very happy with me. And it creates deal flow for me that, frankly, is much more profitable than, than selling uh, coaching programs. OK, so you actually get into this program for much less expensive than others. And like I said, you don't have a salesperson trying to sell you on something. You have me talking to you about what you need to do to actually be successful in this business. And then if you come in and I agree that, you know, it's the right move for us to make, then I actually do the coaching. <laughs> okay, I'm not pushing you off onto one of my acquisitionists. So, you know, 
in this program, we're gonna focus like 90% on what you need to say to sellers. Now, as far as the topic at hand, being able to buy any house from any seller in any market without using any of your own money or any of your own credit. I want you to think of this in three dimensions, okay? There's, there's really only three things that we are going to do with the seller and all deal structures fall underneath these three levels. You know, picture like an organizational chart, you know, of, of employees or something. You know, you start out kind of at the top. So we've got three blocks here, right? Everything derives within these three blocks, okay? The first block is we are gonna get either a deal or we're going to get, well, we're gonna get a deal where the price is so good that we're gonna close on it right away. We're gonna get a contract on it right away. We love the price of that property. We're either gonna assign it to somebody and make money or we're gonna close on it ourselves, perhaps rehab it and then retail sell it and make money. That's sort of the traditional fix and flip type model, the traditional wholesaling type model. So we'll look to get a price first, not by trying to beat them down on price, but by asking questions, which I'll show you how to do when we get into that aspect of things. Um, I think it's a couple weeks from now when I'll go through scripts with you. You can get an idea of that up front though if you ask me for my script book. Uh, put it in the uh, chat there and uh, I'll send it to you if you don't already have it. It's called Expert Phone Scripts. Uh, I'll send that to you, 44 pages. Uh, it'll give you an idea of what our narrative is. Okay, but, but block number one is a, a, a deal in terms of price that's so good that we snatch it up, we get the contract on it and we close on that sucker right away, right? Um, the, other, the other way of doing it within that bucket is we've got to get terms that are very good. Meaning we can pay full price for the house, but they're going to have to be patient in getting it. But we'll pay them for their patience. In other words, we're going to agree to a price that is congruent with whatever the appraised value is of the house, hopefully a little bit less. But you know, within the realm of market value, we're not stealing the house from them. But we're going to get terms that are beneficial to us so that we can take advantage of the huge supply demand imbalance that's out there. Meaning huge demand for housing from folks who don't yet qualify for a loan, but they almost do, but not a big enough supply of houses they can move into right now on a payment plan until we get their loan to come in to cash everybody out, okay? So we need to get good terms. By terms, I mean, what, okay, so what's the price? We're already saying that that's gonna be, you know, close to the value but we're gonna get time to pay that price and we're gonna pay it monthly, either because there's gonna be monthly installments against the price or we're going to be leasing the property, renting the property from the seller for a period of time and during that period of time, we're gonna have the option to buy it from them for whatever price we agree on. So within that, we need to get whatever the price is we need to get a good monthly payment. We need to get a good duration, enough time to make everything happen. Uh, and so that we can actually uh, profit from the deal. And we need to consider how that price is going to be paid. Oftentimes, sellers want a down payment. Well, we want to pay as little down as possible, as little to nothing as possible. So the fourth dimension is how we structure the deal in terms of the price. And I usually tell people the first time you're going to get money from me is the monthly payment. The reason I'm paying you full price is so that I can have time to get you that full price down the line. Whether I give you some now and the rest later is really immaterial to the price. The price stays the same. Okay, so you know if you got to have a big down, we can we can talk about that. But I need to know how close to zero you can get because that is what makes me attracted to this deal is being able to get in where we don't have the down payment built up enough yet to where we can get the loan to come in for our buyer that's going to get you paid in full. So, you know, stop tripping over dimes trying to make dollars. I'm trying to get you this full price and you're worried too much about how it's broken up. Isn't the most important thing to get you this full price. Okay, so that that's sort of the first bucket is we're going to get a deal 
that is so good, either because of the price or the terms, that we're closing on it right away. We're gonna go to contract right away and we're gonna close on this thing uh, before we even have our buyer lined up. You know, we might even have to pay closing costs. We might even have to um, uh, make a couple payments on it before we install our buyer, but the deal is so good because we've done the math on it that we're gonna close right away, okay? Those are the cherries. Those are the ones that you really want, right? Now, what happens very, very frequently, because like I said, 100% of the total addressable market is available to you. What happens very frequently is you'll get someone on the phone and maybe that conversation I just had about down payment uh, doesn't go the way I just described it. And the seller's like, no, I, I, I'm fine with everything that you've said, but I just, I've got to have 25 grand out of this $300,000 house like, like right away because I've got things I need to do with that money or I need it for the down on a, a new house, or you know, I need it to move across the country, or I need it to pay off this bill, or I need it to start a new business, whatever it is, and they're not gonna back off of that. Okay, but I might not wanna give them 25 grand, even though I have like a long duration, I've got a good monthly payment, I've got a good price, I might not wanna just give them 25 grand when I close with them. So what we'll do there is we'll write the deal up the way they want it, if. It makes sense, which that would make sense on a $300,000 house. We ought to be able to get at least 25 grand on that house out of the market. So there is going to be a spread between what our buyer brings us and what we pay that, that seller. But we don't want to go at risk with our 25 grand waiting for that to happen. So what we do is we write up the agreement with the terms that they want, that they've agreed to, but we give ourselves 90 days to close. Okay. So we explain to the seller that, look, because you want this much down, I don't want to get out in front of that until I already have my buyer lined up. Remember, I'm not living in the house, okay? I'm gonna be putting someone in there that I'm trying to get qualified for a loan. I make money from doing their loan and charging them a premium for being able to get them in a house early while we're getting their loan ready. The loan that gets you paid off in full without realtor commissions and hassles and all the crap that you have to deal with in a traditional sale. But if you've just got to have 25 grand down, I need a little bit of time to go out to my buyer's list to, to, to do the type of marketing that we do. And I'm going to put in the agreement that I have 90 days to close on this. Hopefully it won't take that long because I don't really want to spend my money, my time, my energy, my resources, my effort for 90 days before I get the buyer. But I don't want to have my back against the wall either. So I'm going to need 90 days to get you those, those terms, at least as far as what we write in the agreement. Fair enough and you get the seller to agree with that. So you've got deals that will close on right away because they're, they're great. You don't have like that big down payment that you have to worry about. You already know you're gonna have a big down payment coming in from your buyer, so you might as well just go ahead and close now and you'll pay yourself back out of the buyer's proceeds. Bucket number two is what I just described. 90 days we're gonna to get to close because we don't know for sure how the market is gonna to respond to this deal. So we've got the deal, but we wanna wait till we have the buyer lined up so that we can fund our purchase from the seller out of the proceeds we get from our buyer. Those are 90 day closes. Now, the third, the third bucket is going to be when that seller's like, yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I, I just, I don't wanna do that. If we can't, you know, um, you know, make it happen like right now, then, you know, I don't think I'm down with that. So, so what they're telling you at that point is that the only way that they will sell this house really is traditionally to an owner occupant buyer who's going to pay full retail price and who's going to bring in a loan in 30 days or whatever that gets them paid off in full. And if that's the case, we're going to move them into this third bucket. And that third bucket is explaining to them how it works and help them understand that the pool that they're fishing in the pool of buyers that they're fishing for, almost 100% of those buyers are represented by realtors. They are. Why? Because realtor services are free for those kinds of buyers. Why would a buyer go it alone when they could have a realtor drive them around in a nice car, take them to Starbucks, take them to lunch, treat them like royalty, set up the closing, set up the appraisal, set up the inspection, do all this work for them, and they don't have to pay anything. No buyer is going to not choose to take advantage of that. So if that seller is only gonna sell it that way, they need a realtor to represent them. And that's why I recommend you guys get a realtor license because you can pick up those listings. Now, if you won't get a realtor license, we'll have a realtor on our team or we'll have a realtor that's very close 
to us where we can refer those listings to them. And, you know, there's a way to deal with that in which um, there is remuneration for, for you. So you're either going to close right away because the deal is good. You're going to the deal. There's something that has a little bit of hair on it. You don't like it quite enough to close on it right away. So you give yourselves 90 days to close, or we move them into this, what I call a realtor funnel where preferably you just go out and get a license because if you go get a license, you'll be picking up listings left and right. If you're already a realtor, you ought to be doing this. Can you imagine how many more listings you can get as a realtor when you approach the seller as a buyer instead of just some other numbnuts who wants to broker their house and, and siphon a commission out of the equity of their house? Sellers get sick of that. But if you're calling trying to buy it, you demonstrate your character, your competency, you're talking about how you can buy it, and maybe they don't want to do it that way, but they appreciate the, the way you've handled things, you've already built a report and set the stage for you to go in and grab that realtor listing, which they're gonna have to do anyway. 90% of the people that we call who don't end up doing a deal that's good enough for us to close on right away or one where we get 90 days to close, if you, if you pay attention to those houses and track them, 90% of them will be listed with a realtor within a couple of months. Why shouldn't it be you? It's a lot of money to do that. And, and the listing realtors don't even have to do that much work. Particularly if you, you hire virtual assistants, you put it in the computer, you wait for the buyer's agent to call. Buyer's agent does all the work. <laughs> it's hard to get the listing, right? But once you get the listing, it's exposed to the world. It's in the MLS. You don't have to go out and knock on doors and try to sell something. People are going to call you about that house. Okay. So it's, it's easy money as a safety net. So those are the three buckets, right? Those are the three buckets that um, you need to be uh, aware of. All right. So with that in mind, when we uh, jump on next week, I'm going to show you the different deal structures that fall underneath those three buckets. Again, remember I said, picture this like an organizational chart in a, you know, for an employer. So we've got these three buckets, close right away, close 90 days, push to realtor. Within the close right away and the 90 day block, there's various deal structures that we can do. We can wholesale a property, we can rehab a property, we can assign a contract, we can lease option a property, we can sell or finance a property, we can take a property's debt over, meaning you know, take a property subject to, we can create wraparound financing. There, there's all kinds of structures and I'm gonna give you sort of a reader's digest on all of those structures when we get back on the call next week. Okay, now let me just reiterate to you that I'm giving you a roadmap, right? I'm giving you the road atlas of how to succeed in real estate and roadmaps can get you from point A to point B. You can be successful going out and grabbing my mini course, paying attention to these events and go out and implement what I'm telling you. But it's very similar to driving a car across country using a road atlas or a roadmap. Nobody does that anymore. Why not? Because it's fraught with peril. You end up getting divorced because your wife's like, hey, you missed the exit, honey. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. See, I told you, you did miss the exit. <laughs> not that that happened, but that kind of a thing happens. You get, you know, you, you know, it's fraught with peril. You're always wondering if you're on the right track. There's a lot of anxiety and you don't get the help you need. Okay, so why don't people do that anymore? We have this thing called GPS. The GPS you set it up on the dash and it's like, you could be arguing with your kids, you could be arguing with your spouse, you could be doing whatever, you could be listening to books on tape, you could be off in la la land thinking about things and the GPS is gonna be in your ear saying, your exit is two miles ahead, stay to the right, your exit is a thousand feet, at the fork, turn left, there's the destination on the right. Okay, that makes life a lot easier and you never have any anxiety driving from point A to point B when you have GPS. Well, I'd submit to you that you ought to take that approach with real estate. Getting a coach, somebody who can look at all your deals, someone who you can talk to on a daily basis to help you understand where you're at and what direction you need to take and answer your questions is the equivalent of having a real estate navigation system, a real estate navigation GPS system. And the amount of money that it costs you to get, at least in my program, is less than what I'll optimize on your first deal and making that deal more profitable for you. It happens literally every single time. So to me, you ought to, you ought to think about, you ought to think seriously 
about putting this whole roadmap strategy down and getting a GPS. And to find out if that's right for you, you ought to jump on a Zoom call. Jump on a Zoom call with me and let's figure that out. Okay, uh, no harm, no foul if we don't you know, get together on it. I'm still gonna uh, give you the roadmap. But I'm just telling you in, in today's day and age, use GPS people, seriously. Get GPS level guidance, all right? But if you refuse to do it, I'm here to help you. Drop your questions in the comments. Let me know what they are. I'll try to answer it from afar as best as I can and we'll get you where you're going. So uh, it's the start of 2022. Now's the best time. Let's get it going, folks. Oh, I said I'd answer questions in the comments. Are there any in here? Let me see. Let me take a look. I think it's just people asking for stuff here. Let's see. What do we got? Hey, everybody. Uh, let's see. Any properties that are not getting full or above? Sure, there's properties all the time that aren't getting full. I mean, uh, we've got people that do wholesaling in our group that have done over seven figures this year. If you're a wholesaling property, you're getting them at 60 cents on the dollar. I'm just telling you that those deals, Ben, are harder to find than ever before. But what I'm also telling you is it doesn't matter if you have to give them full price. If you get good enough terms, we can make a fortune on those deals. I just got uh, a settlement statement where I'm gonna get over $150,000 on a deal. I paid more than full price for the property, okay? And when I talk about deal structures next week, I'm gonna show you how that kind of a thing can happen. All right, so pay attention. Gives you some motivation to uh, come back next week. All right, y'all. I'll come back in and give you the things that you've asked for in the chat. If you're watching on replay, I appreciate it. Let me know what you need. I'll try to help you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of this, this glorious weekend. And peace and love. Peace and love. Appreciate y'all. Have a good one, guys and gals.